In other news, now the Corruption Perception Index CPI 2020 report published by Transparency International TI has indicated Nigeria occupies 149th position out of 180 countries. Nigeria moved three places down compared to previous ranking of 2019. The National Body of Transparency International in Nigeria, Civil Society Legislative Advocacy Center, CISLAC, says the poor performance can be key to lack of transparency in government spending, lopsided appointment and extra vacant spending. Annually, the money that goes into security votes amounts to about 242 billion on an annual basis. And that is a whole lot of money. How do we begin to transfer this kind of spending into conventional security institutions and not deprive them of funding. This money represents about 70% of the money that goes to the Nigerian police. It is actually bigger than the Nigerian Air Force and Nigerian AV budget put together. And that for us is not a very constructive approach to secure and manage people in this country. We notice nepotism and favoritism in the appointment and promotion of some public officers. For example, the Nigerian Ministry of Foreign Affairs in itself is not an exception with allegations of individual promoted on the basis of their relationship and their affiliations as against merits and other criteria stated in the rule book. In 2016, a whistleblower policy was uh, introduced and it is being financed by the Ministry of Federal Ministry of Finance. And in the first three months where this, um, after this uh, policy was introduced, there were thousands of people, you know, that reached out to the Ministry of Finance, you know, to, you know, report incidences of corruption because the policy provided for anonymous, you know, complaints and anonymous reports. This goes to show that this is a very positive initiative that will definitely, definitely help in promoting our anti-corruption campaign in Nigeria. However, a legislation needs to be put in place. Well, joining us to throw more insight on that report is Olali Kon Adegu, Public Affairs Analyst. Good evening to you. Many thanks for joining us on PLUS TV News. Good evening. Well, let's start from this way. Nigeria's ranking on the Corruption Perception Index has continued to drop in the last four years. But with the current ranking, Nigeria is two steps worse off than in 2018. What exactly are your concerns? Yeah, uh, uh, good evening. Uh, yeah, yes, immediately I saw the report, I was uh, a, a bit concerned uh, the, about the fact that if you look at the uh, uh, the, the programs of the Buhari administration, particularly his campaign promises uh, in 2015, you will see that uh, the fight against corruption was actually a, 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 big, uh, a big campaign manifesto for the Buhari administration. However, we don't seem to understand the fact that corruption has become a societal, institutional, and fundamental problem in Nigeria, and a lot of people seem to have taken it as a norm, uh, 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 as a way, in fact, almost as a way of life, to the extent that it's even been glorified as, uh, you know, as a, as a form of uh, 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 economic, uh, uh, what, what can I call it now, e e economic security for some people. So we will have continuously a situation in which we begin to go deeper in this aspect of, of our national life, which is corruption, and we begin to go deeper and it, will be, it begins to affect our national life, our national psyche, infrastructural development, economic growth, and all facets of our lives. Because corruption is a cancer that's, that's, that, that even no nation can survive on. Laliko, let's try and make more sense um, out of all of this. Well, some believe that reports of hoarding of COVID-19 palliatives by state government factored into Nigeria's drop. Do you agree? I didn't get you. Can you, can you repeat that question? Well, I said some believe that uh, one of the reasons why Nigeria dropped is that uh, there were reports of hoarding of COVID-19 palliatives by state government. Do you agree with that? I strongly agree with that because 
when you look at, for example, the area of public infrastructure and the decay in the infrastructural development, you can link it directly to corruption. And if you notice during the NSAS, most of these uh, palliatives that were stored uh, in, in private, uh, uh, for, for private uses, in fact, some politicians actually said they are going to you, you know, distribute these palliatives on their bed days. Things that should have been distributed during the lockdown, that when people needed this more, when hunger was a major issue, they, and these are palliatives that were paid for from government for coffers, and these people want to really, uh, you know, privatize it to make it look like uh, uh, it's something that they are bringing out from their pockets rather than from government coffers. These are some of the things that we will add up in transparency reports, which will make, you know, which will make them really understand, uh, 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 give us the, 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 the bad index. But and most of these things are found their ways into the media, which are reported. Don't forget, during the COVID, uh, COVID lockdown, the Minister for the Ministry of um, uh, Social Development and Dis uh, Humanitarian uh, Affairs and Disaster Management came out with that several billions of naira have been allocated to most of these palliatives that have found their ways either into state government focus, which were distributed by the first uh, or to private pockets because they have access, uh, because they are high-ranking politicians and, uh, right, and what have you. Right. So all these things add up in the final analysis. All right, Olalika, where does this place uh, this present administration's fight against corruption, uh, plus all the various anti-corruption agencies we have operating in Nigeria? I didn't get you. Can you repeat that question? Where does all of this place the current administration's fight against corruption and all the anti-corruption agencies that we have in Nigeria? Now, the, the problem I've been having so far with the Buhari administration fight or fight, the fight against corruption is that this fight against corruption tends to be personal, you know, uh, well, the person of Buhari may not be the corrupt type of person, but what I was expecting was a serious institutional reform for change management that will have ushered in uh, the kind of, uh, you, don't, you, don't need, you don't need Magu, for example, to be the one to be championing the fight against corruption. It should have been a, an EFCC thing. If in, in the event that Magu leaves, the fight against corruption can still continue. If worry leaves, the fight against corruption can still continue. But we have, an, we have institutions that are fundamentally corrupt in, in, in such a way that even if you bring the most saint person, uh, if there's a word, if there's a, is a, is a, is a phrase like that, it will still be corrupted. Look at how Magu was, was embarrassed out of the EFCC, for example. And we have had situations like that in other agencies of government. So there is really nothing much that most of these institutions will do if we have these uh, institutions still uh, remaining the way they are without strong institutional reforms, without, with, without strong judiciary that can stand, that can dispense justice both judicially and judiciously. All right, uh, Olalika. Uh, well, many believe that the repeated failure to enact the proceeds of Crime Act as a legal framework could be another issue. Do you agree? Yes, uh, if you ask me, uh, um, uh, well, well, we have so much laws to be able to fight against corruption in this country. Uh, we talk too much about laws. For example, the office of the president, technically speaking, is an anti-corruption office. The office of the attorney general of the federation is an anti-corruption office. The Office of the Accountant General of the Federation is an anti-corruption office. We have established agencies like EFCC, ICPC, and so many uh, the, 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 uh, the financial intelligence units, and so many other uh, uh, agencies of government that have been established for this sole purpose. My argument will then be, it's not about the absence of laws, but the weakness of institutions. 
Dr. Olaleko, just before we let you go, as a way of proffering solutions, what do we begin to do as a country to remedy the image of Nigeria first for Nigerians and, of course, the international community? First, I would like to talk to the media in this regard because uh, it seems, uh, from, from what I got, it seems the media uh, 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 have, have an issue here in the, way, in the way some journalists glorify some of these corrupt politicians. It, you know, in the way you know, they, they celebrate so called uh, the buying of judges to, uh, to get justice and things like that. So the media needs to work on that area. In, in my opinion. Also, we need serious attitudinal change from the lowest to the highest level in this country because we cannot change Nigeria if we don't change Nigerians because that is where it stands from. And it starts from the schools. It starts from the student unions in the universities. It starts from uh, uh, the, the unions of journalists taking this as a challenge to fight against corruption. The fight against corruption cannot just be left to Buhari alone. It cannot just be left to the head of the EFCC alone. It has to start from ourselves. And the cleansing will start from our family, from our schools, from our place of work, and every other areas of our national life. Then we will be talking about uh, 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 having a positive uh, global uh, global perception right. of corruption in Nigeria. All right, thank you so much. We have been speaking with um, Olali Khan, a public affairs analyst, uh, breaking down the CPI 2020 and Nigeria's 149th position. We do appreciate your time and, of course, your thoughts on the news yeah. tonight. Thank you for having me. Hello. Hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.